Well, hello everyone. Thanks for another installment of our Fun Fact Friday. Today, I'm so excited. Uh, Andrew and I are talking with one of our amazing agents, Nicole Rendesi. Um, Nicole and I have been together a long time, um, but with another company. Uh, prior to real estate, you were in the lending industry and your mom still is, if I remember correctly. And yes. also um, you, do, you are bilingual. So I can talk a little bit about that. So welcome, yeah. Nicole. Well, thank you. Thank you. Thank you for having me on today. Yeah, so tell us a little bit about Nicole, your family. Um, I know you have some integration in a couple of markets, and we'll just see how yeah. the conversation goes. Okay, yeah. Well, um, I am um, originally from Indiana. I started my uh, real estate career assisting my mother in the mortgage industry. So I just was kind of a part-time helper through college, worked there just to make a little bit of money while I went to college and really fell in love with it. After school, I got sucked in, became a originator in the lending market and then decided to get my real estate license. So I was licensed as a realtor and a mortgage lender in Indiana for many years. And then my husband and I uh, moved out to Denver and we've been here uh, over a decade now. I can't believe time has flown. Yes, now we have a Colorado native. We uh, have a little boy, he's six. Um, and so, yeah, we, we traveled back and forth to Indiana to uh, visit family. And with that, I kept my real estate license in Indiana so I can still help both both markets and, and both sets of friends and everybody uh, in both states. So um, I've really enjoyed doing that uh, with my mother on the lending side. I am bilingual. She is Colombian. So we do have a lot of Hispanic clients. So I try to reach out and make sure that um, people in the Hispanic community do understand home buying, the process, what they're able to do. And I am able to get a lot of people um, into their first home. So it's a very exciting uh, part of my job. Oh, fantastic. And just recently, about a week ago or so, uh, you won another Carrot Award with the South Metro Association of Realtors. So congratulations to you again. Thank you. Thank you. Very happy. Yes, um, that, that took a lot of work. We, we helped quite a few families this year uh, get into new homes and uh, move people into town, move some people out of town. But um, yeah, it was a very exciting year last year. We had a lot of a lot of families that we helped. So very exciting. That's incredible. Well, so, Nicole, I'd, I'd love to hear because you kind of have experience in a lot of different sides of our industry here. So I'd love to hear a little, hear a little bit about, um, you know, kind of some of your, your background in the lending side, what making that tra transition was like and, and what made you decide to go with the real estate side instead of continuing on the lending <laughs> side. Yes, yes. Lending, lending is great. I'm glad I did have that background. Um, I, I think it is an essential piece in the real estate market um, as a realtor, because you know what type of financing your client has, if the property is going to, to pass um, based on like FHA restrictions, um, learning the veteran financing so you can help our veterans. Um, the, <laughs> the lending side, everybody calls you because you have the money. So that was one of the pieces at the very end. Are we done? Are we done? Is the money there? Are we ready to close? So that level was a, a little stressful for me. Um, just everybody looking to you to make sure that the underwriter did her job, the closing, the closing department's gotten the documents together. So mm -hmm. I really loved looking at homes with, with clients. I did study architecture in college. That was one of my fields that I went into. Um, so I really loved the house piece. I love going in and pointing out things that most people may not notice. Um, when they walk through a home. So I, I veered a little bit more to the home side, just with my love of architecture and to kind of start calling the lender instead of having them call me. So <laughs> it was nice to push that responsibility off. Um, but yeah, getting into homes on a daily is, is really fun for me. Great. And then I'd, I'd love to hear too, because we have a lot of, uh, you know, our younger lender or lenders, our younger realtors that are kind of just cracking the industry and they may or may not be from the Denver area or have a lot of uh, time in here. So I, I'd love to hear what it was like kind of launching a business in a, in a new state and also what it's like kind of having clients in two different states that are, have, you know, it's not like it's just Colorado, Nebraska, right? They're, they're spread out yeah. a good distance. So I'd love to see how, hear how you manage that as well as how you were able to kind of get started uh, in a new area. Yeah, the getting Nebraska. started. So when I first moved out to Denver, I, I jumped into the lending side again because I wasn't sales 
Um, I, I was an in-house lender at um, another company, so it, it worked out nice because we we had the the realtors bring us um, the the loans. So, mm-hmm. but as soon as I decided to flip out of lending and back into real estate, all of my contacts were realtors. So I realized, wow, I still don't know anybody who needs my services as a realtor. I need to really get out there and start talking to everybody, and that is really what I did. And and I always. Uh, giggle because my very first deal was the cleaning lady at the real estate office that I worked at. I ended up staying late one night and I was leaving after hours. I just saw her and said, Hey, do you have a house? And she's like, no. I said, great, let's talk. So she was really excited that I could help her. And and it was a Hispanic client. So all, all in Spanish. My, my first deal was a fully bilingual transaction. Um, but yeah, I literally had to get out there and talk to everyone I knew. Anytime I saw people, the server at the restaurant to, you know, the gentleman in an elevator, if I could spark up a random conversation, which I'm a talker. So I can usually, usually pick up a conversation with anybody. Um, but yeah, working working in both states too. It's it's been a, a unique experience. Just trying to balance where and when to be somewhere. If I need to be in Indiana for a family event, then I try to um, plan ahead to see if I can meet some past friends. I chat again. One of my most recent leads from back in Indiana. I just met a mother who was waiting for her daughter at Taekwondo, and she was having a beer at a bar. <laughs> so nice. we just we just started chatting, and she told me everything, and she was moving. So I was able to to sneak into that conversation and offer my services and let her know that I was available to help. So keeping keeping the conversation going and reminding people, I think, is huge that you're in the real estate business. One of my last deals in Indiana before moving out here was a friend of mine who we hung out every weekend and he forgot what I did. <laughs> so when he told me, we're looking for houses this weekend, I gave him a look, said, why didn't you call me? So remind everyone, even your good friends, because they may forget what you do for a living. That's a really good point. You know, we talk about that with our agents regularly, right? It's our job to remind people that we're in the, in our profession, right? It's not their job to remember us. I think sometimes we forget that, especially a new agent, as Andrew was was referencing, because they haven't been through that process yet, right? Um, talk to us a little bit about your creativity. So last year you had a you had a you had a buyer and you sourced in a, their ideal neighborhood in a very unique way found them a house. And, and, and yes, it came with its own challenges, but high level, what did you do there? And then I think you might be doing that again for another one. I am. I am. So yes, the, the market has been, has been different. Uh, it's been a buyer's market on one week and then it'll flip to a seller market the next. So just trying to be flexible with how you find properties is really key for this industry right now. Um, I do have a client that we're struggling to find a house. So I brought up a tactic I used uh, last year. So I had a set of uh, buyers moving from out of state. They fell in love with this neighborhood and the turnover wasn't very high. Very few people sold in that neighborhood because it was so lovely and it it was a great place to, to be a forever home. So we kept looking and kept looking and we could not find anything on the market. So finally, I suggested farming specific homes that had the minimum requirements we needed in one neighborhood. I sent over 200 letters to possible sellers to let them know that we're just looking, we're in the area, we're not trying to make a deal or or, or save, you know, uh, go below market value for their property. And we ended up getting quite a few responses. And through it all, we, we got into a few homes that were not on the market. And they fell in love with one and we were able to lock in a sale. I assisted the seller um, with the paperwork, but I represented the buyer through the transaction and they are head over heels in love and so thankful that we found something and they didn't have to go in a competing market situation. So overbidding, um, it was it was a great, a great opportunity. And um, I'm actually pulling out that a tool this week. I got a letter going out to another neighborhood for another set of clients who are excited to hope and find uh, someone who didn't know they were really ready to sell, but we hope to push them off the fence. <laughs> well, and I think sometimes too, I think a lot of people with a lot of the um, iBuyer 
products that have been out there the last probably five years. There's a lot of people out there that are interested in real estate. They may want to sell. They don't want to go through the process of a sign in the yard. They don't want to go through the showings. They don't want to go through inspections. They just want to sell their house and move on, right? Um, there's a lot of those people out there and they, they don't know what they don't know. The other thing, and I remember as a young realtor, somebody told me staying in front of people was important because you don't know if a spouse just came home and said, hey, honey, we're being transferred. Yes. You don't know. You don't know if they said, hey, honey, we're pregnant. <laughs> you know, <laughs> you don't know, right? And so a lot of times we think our people are solid and they're never going to move ever. Yeah. Um, and they decide that they're going to. So um, maybe you and Andrew can tag team this one. I know that you are part of our relocation team. Andrew is as well. Uh, maybe talk a little bit about that high level executive corporate relo that you're involved in as, as well. Yes, yes. Uh, relocation is a great opportunity. Um, I I really enjoy that sector. It allows me to be the, I guess, end all for, for some people who are moving. It might be extremely stressful. Relocating with work, we have one spouse who's already started a job that they need to focus on because it's their primary source. And then, you know, a spouse who might be trying to get the house ready and clean and get the dogs and get everything situated. So I try to really focus on how I can help in every step of the way. Uh, some of the services that I do provide our VIP relocation clients is a full deep clean in the home. Um, staging with my professional stager. I bring in my professional photographer who can do drone and, and walkthroughs of the home. We can get floor plans and everything. So you really don't need to do anything but put away your clothes <laughs> so the house is beautiful and ready to go. Uh, I try to provide um, even moving boxes. If if their relocation package doesn't give them boxes up front with that moving truck, then, then I try to get them stuff so they can start to declutter. But I really do focus on their needs, what is going to happen during this transition, and make sure that they're all comfortable. Because like you said, one spouse might not be super excited or they're really happy where they are. Um, actually, I just met a client. They bought their forever home with the spectacular mountain view and they got relocated, but the promotion is an amazing promotion. So it's worth the move, but sometimes there are emotions involved as always, when you have to leave a home you fall in love with. But I really do um, focus on the client and make sure that they have everything they need from start to finish. Yeah, and I'll definitely echo that, you know, and I've actually been fortunate enough to work in, in tandem with Nicole on a couple of these relocation deals. So I think we've have a pretty good insight into each other's strategy. And and to Nicole's point, like especially on the the outbound uh, relocation, it's it's a very different thing because oftentimes, I mean, the Nicole is talking about one person being less engaged in the transaction. Oftentimes, one person's not even here anymore, and like yeah. that person's off in New York doing their thing, and you're left with one person who's got to corral the family and the dogs, and and they're you know like while their family is getting a promotion, oftentimes they are not, you know, so they're, they they feel a little bit foisted on them. And so it's, it's definitely takes a lot to, I, I want to, just like Nicole said, take as much stress off of that person as I possibly can, you know? And then on the other side, when you have the inbound relocation, um, you know, coming into a market, you know, uh, I mean, I know you've worked this because I've done a lot of these too, like, especially when people are working in like tradesmen from different industries or just any really industry coming inbound, they might be coming from a place that is not as competitive and not as dynamic of a market as, Colorado is. So if someone's coming from Portland, Seattle, California, while that is still a difficult transition, they might at least be used to the speed. But if yeah. someone's coming from parts of Texas, parts of the Midwest, parts of the, uh, of the South, where like, they're like, yeah, hey, my last house, I didn't even put earnest money down, right? Wow. Let, yes. let alone having to work with, um, you know, managing their, uh, managing their in-band transition. And they often think that, hey, on that, like, one weekend visit they get they're gonna go buy a house it's like well maybe you know but <laughs> we we have to be prepared to like lose a couple if we're not going to be hyper aggressive on our on our offers and i don't want to put them in a position where they're upside down especially if they are going to get relocated again in another two to four years you know yes so it's uh for me those inbound people i try to have some pretty extensive conversations with them ahead of their trip out here i try to put them on zoom so i can see them face to face and explain to them like hey this might operate a little differently than what you're used to, right? And depending on the city, it may not, right? But I think it's still important for me to have, you know, the home to me, and this is a, a point I try to make with all of my buyers, like the, the baseball card statistics of your house are important, but in my mind, 
you know, one be your secondary versus what is the lifestyle that you and your family are going to be required to when you're moving here, right? So if you need to be by the best schools and you want to have access to the mountains and you want to, and you're like a big outdoors person, then I can work on, then I'll ask you how many bedrooms, how many bathrooms, yada, yada, yada. If you want to be a downtown, walk into bars, walk into restaurants, walk into cafes. Yeah. Great. That might be a different conversation for size and square footage and number of bathrooms and all that good stuff. But I mean, I, I can put you in a six bedroom house, you know, <laughs> on the Nebraska border, but that may not be what you want. Right. So yeah. for me, it's, it's all about managing those expectations in a tighter time frame and articulating the unique challenges of our market here in Denver that yes. may or may not align with their market that they're used to, depending on where they're moving from. Right. So yeah. um, it's different challenges. And I'm really excited to help out both those people. How I cut my teeth in the industry was helping people move in to Denver from oftentimes out of city or out of state and helping them rent something. So I'm really rewarded by helping to make that transition to buying for sure. Yes. Yes. Yeah. The buyers, the buyers are a huge piece too, especially when they're coming from out of state because they don't really know the area either. So um, it is a, it is a challenge to make sure that they feel comfortable where they're going, give them time to find different properties with those lifestyles. Cause I do know a lot of people love the downtown scene. They only have one car. They, they walk everywhere to do the groceries. You know, I'm a, I'm a suburbs girl with two cars and I drive everywhere. So the mm -hmm. lifestyle definitely uh, makes a difference. Obviously we have a lot of outdoorsy people here. Um, so being close to trails and, and mountains, hiking, things like that are, are a huge selling feature. So just trying to find a home that um, brings them everything they think they need. Mm -hmm. Right. Absolutely. That, yeah. That's a, that's a huge point. I remember, you know, when I first, um, got in the business, you know, people would say, we're, we're going to go to Denver, but then we talk to them, they've got kids and the schools and school districts and mm -hmm. um, the, the, the things that are not, as you're very well aware, it's not just about some of that. It's, it's on a Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, all the school stuff that happens, yeah. maybe before school, after school, right. And to be convenient to that, you know, yes. we, um, I was talking with some of my, my family yesterday and uh, my youngest sister happens to be pregnant. And she was telling me that they are, they're 18 months minimum to get on the list for daycare. Yes. And yep. so kids not even be born until August. They're, they're on the list now. And that's not early enough. But yes. how, do you, how, do you yeah, I, how do you know? I just did right? that dance too, man. And there's, there's <laughs> yeah. lists that are like three and four yeah. years out. I'm like, how the heck am I supposed to know that, man? I did. Um, I know. And, and one thing that just jumped to mind too, that I would just give advice to anyone on our team that happens to be listening to this. Uh, I, I, I've i only ever been on, on real teams here in Windermere, so I don't know how other teams work, but I, I imagine it's very similar. Um, I think a lot of us, at least when we initially get in the, into this, rely a lot on it, and justifiably so, our in-house team back in Seattle, and they are amazing. They offer amazing support, so continue to work alongside them. But my advice to people where I've started having more success in the ease of transition, especially with kind of winning some of these competitive listing side deals, is collaborate as much as you can with the um, reload companies advisor that works in parallel with their with their uh, client, right? Because that person has probably already had several conversations with your potential client on the listing side or your active client on the buy side before you've ever even been sent their name and phone number, right? So if you can reach out to them and, and if you've worked with them before, fantastic, right? If you've never worked before, introduce yourself like, hey, my name is Andrew. I'm one of the you know potential listing agents for your client's property. I appreciate the opportunity. Look forward to working with you. Is there anything that they've mentioned that would be a specific you know want or need or something they could that could help me help them mm -hmm. as much as possible and obviously make your job easier too, right? Because yes. those people, I, I you know, I, I, and I'm as guilty of this as anybody, especially early on when I didn't realize it. I think it's easy to voice some conflict onto them on sure. their on their relocation side because you know it, it can feel that way sometimes for whatever reason because we want to treat these people as any other client and there's not right there's more machinations and the relocation company is almost as much our client as the individual person is right yeah, and sure. so we have to respect that and those people deal with a lot of stuff man like they mm -hmm. are dealing with you another agent <laughs> probably both people's tcs another agent on the outbound side right they're dealing with getting a moving truck going they're dealing with and and we all know that all of our clients do all their paperwork 100 correct and, and on time every time right so that should be easy so they deal with a lot of crap and i have tried to correct my behavior over the last couple several years and really collaborate with them yeah and not that i've made it harder on them but i didn't <laughs> bring them onto the team in a way that i would have like a lender or a title rep 
which they are. They are a part of my client's team to make their life easier. And I would advise everyone to like not make the same mistake I did in the first year and and not include them, right? Because they're an important part and they can make our life a ton easier too. And guys, those people have some sway. I mean, they they obviously are not going to like direct someone to go with not you, but if you make their life easier, I think I I would venture a guess that your percentage would increase. So, you know, um, so that's my, I don't know if you had a, a similar thing going on, Nicole, maybe you were cooler than I was right away. Um, but uh, yeah, that, that was something that I wanted to just put out there, like collaborate with them, be an active collaborate with them, not someone that just is a, you know, randomly working with whoever is in front of you. Yeah, well, communication yeah. throughout the entire process, communicating with all parties is huge, and and they're a piece of the puzzle. So definitely uh, looping them in, making sure that there isn't a piece that you're missing because they have had all those upfront conversations. And I I do see some people, you know, don't want to share everything with us. They might not give us all the the dirty. Uh, background information that that may help us uh, make a shift to make their transition um, easier. But yeah, having communication with everyone is huge. So getting all on board makes the transaction smoother. It sure does. So Nicole, you're also um, through a lot of our processes and things that we do at Windermere, um, you graciously uh, volunteered along with Shelby to be a part of the foundation. Yes. So can you just give us our thoughts a little bit on the foundation and some kind of maybe a vision that maybe you might have or some things that we could even do as a brokerage? Yeah, well, I, I really uh, love the foundation. In my personal life, um, I will see, you know, a homeless person on the street or someone who just doesn't have everything that they could have to make their life a little easier. And so I always have this this pull going, oh, I wish I could give back in a more meaningful way. Um, so that was the foundation when they said they really wanted to have somebody to represent us locally. I was excited to join because that gives us a true opportunity to give back to something that matters in our in our local community. That is so wonderful. Uh, I love that the foundation, while we donate to the foundation, the money comes back to us. So we as agents can put money toward the 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 shelters or the the single mothers homes or things like that that really matter to us as individuals in the office and I, I like that we have an opportunity to ask other agents where we want the money to go if there is something that is true uh, and near and dear to their heart that they want to focus on um, we can we can help facilitate that and give back to our community uh, in many ways I loved we have done in the past you know the cooking for the the shelter where we would bring meals that we home cook to help them out um, mm -hmm. with some of their meal programs and I always thought that that was amazing um, I know there's a lady in a local here she asks for bread and peanut butter all the time because she just passes out sandwiches to anybody she sees so being able to give back in some way or another is amazing and I think the Windermere Foundation really hits home um, and, and does an amazing job and allows us locally to use our funds in some place that we feel is very important to us in our community. Oh, very well said. And thank you so much for all the work that you guys are doing. And Andrew and I feel the exact same way. I think you know, you're, you're right. We're so fortunate in our world and we're so fortunate to be able to do what we do and live the lifestyles that we all live to be able to give back is huge, right? Um, so Andrew referenced support and talked about more around the relocation, you know, talk to us a little bit about the support that you get at Windermere, whether it's from um, our administrative staff, marketing, training, Andrew, myself, those type of things for you to, to be a better broker. Yes, well, um, I think the, the training tools that Windermere Corporate offers us from Moxie um, to the, the Engage program, just, just the clean very high end quality of presentations that we can send to clients, buyers and sellers. I use it for buyers who want to go on a tour. I plug in all the homes, they get all the maps, where to go, the beautiful photos all in one place. So I really do love the technology that is provided to us. Um, at a at a small level, our, our local office with you and Andrew, that has been one of the, the big pieces that have kept me because obviously as agents, we're independent. We do our business the way we do it each each separate um, from each other so you will find an ability to go to any brokerage but finding one that really feels connected to you is a big deal I've worked at four I want to say um, different different companies uh, throughout uh, the nation and 
just working with you guys personally has been amazing. Michael is always available. If he's not, he say, I'm on the phone, I'll call you right back. But you don't feel lost in, in a group of, of many, in the sea of agents that are out there. And as a newer agent, I think this is a great office because you guys really guide people. You teach them what they need to do. While we take the test to pass and get our license, that's not the real world. <laughs> that's that's the legal side of paperwork in the background that we all need to know. But but getting your feet wet and learning how to move forward and and where to focus and spend money or not spend money, because I know there's a lot of things out there you can spend money on that don't get you anywhere. Oh. So, Working Absolutely. with you and, and now having Andrew as as a, a partner and being able to reach out to him, um, it's great. I I always drag him in if I've got a, you know a, a special listing or maybe a client looking downtown where I don't know the area. I think our local office has a huge variety of agents who know very different things. We've got the land guy, we got the mountain girl, we got the down south, we got the downtown. Those places I don't normally sell. So having able having people that we're able to recruit to join and 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 merge our knowledge together to help new agents, new buyers, whoever it is that we're working with, I think we have such a variety and you guys really are there to help us grow and you're not just there to get a paycheck. So I really appreciate the uh, the love you have for us and, and the attention you give us because it is important. I've been in the business for many years, but I still will call Michael for a silly question that I just can't wrap my head around, but I want to bounce it off of somebody to make sure that that gut check that you always say, just to make sure I'm right on track and, and I know what I'm doing, but just to have that support is great. So I really do appreciate you both. Oh, thank well, you so much. Thanks, I appreciate it. Thanks so much. For those kind of words, I really do appreciate it. And, and we do want to thank you for your time today. And then, you know, I, I do want to say, you know, wh where can folks uh, from, from Colorado or from Indiana connect with you to kind of make access to your services? You yes. know, what, you know, Facebook, Instagram, elevators yes. you frequent, you know, like where, where can people <laughs> okay. bump into you uh, exactly. to make sure they can get the amazing service that you offer? Yeah. Well, I am Googleable, um, so you can look me up at Nicole Rundacy on Google. I do have some reviews there too. Thankfully, the internet is giving me uh, some five-star reviews. Um, you can also call me at 720-724-7030. I am available by text. I am up way later than I should be, so anytime is fine. Um, but yes, uh, Indiana or Colorado, I love um, flying back and forth if as needed to uh, help anybody in any state. Awesome. awesome. Well, well, thanks so much, guys. I appreciate everyone's time here. So yeah, please do reach out to Nicole. She's an amazing agent. Um, she can, and again, if, if uh, you know, she does speak Spanish. So if that is your preferred language, I, she is my number one recommendation in the entire state in both those states. Uh, mm -hmm. She's going to take great care of you. Um, and, I, and if you can't have me call her, if you speak English, so it's uh, fine. <laughs> um, so. Uh, have a great <laughs> have a great day guys uh look forward to seeing you guys next week and um i'm sure we will have you back nicole you and shelby collaborating once we kind of get a little closer to um our event here in june um and probably a, maybe a wrap up uh might be a better way to do that but after our uh, our foundation event coming up so i'm looking forward to hearing uh, all yeah. that good stuff so yeah wonderful awesome. thank you guys cool. have a great day thanks thank thanks again Nicole. have an awesome weekend thank you bye-bye